I am Barry O'Carroll from the Europe Direct Information Centre at the Blanchardstown Library and I'm back with another interview in our series on education and employment options for young people and today I'm delighted to be joined by Maria Conte um, who is a communications and marketing officer at VSI, that's the Voluntary Service International, the Irish branch and uh, you're very welcome Maria. Thank you. And I'm going to just start off, if you could tell me a little bit about your current role. Perfect. Okay, so well, currently I'm volunteering as VSI's in-country ESC volunteer, which is kind of a new concept for them. And VSI is the Irish branch of Civil Service International, which is a global peace movement uh, working towards peace, solidarity and social justice. So currently I'm their marketing communications officer and I started in November and I'll be with them until this December. And it's going really, really well so far. Um, I'm managing their social media and we have some exciting projects coming up, um, which is great, it's really interesting. And I'm taking part in a careers fair in UL in March. So I'm looking forward to that. Excellent. And I'll be asking a little bit more about UL later actually. And um, Obviously, COVID has affected your work at the moment. It's, it's you know, transformed it as it has with mine and everyone else's. So how's that affected you? So I would say it's kind of 50-50. I mean, on one hand, it is kind of fantastic that I could roll out of bed, you know, five minutes before <laughs> nine and get yeah. to work. That, that part is brilliant. And I get to skip the whole commuting, which is great. Uh, but then on the other hand, it is kind of difficult with everything being online and you're glued to your computer screen and you kind of, you know, you miss the human interaction. You miss, um, you know, talking over the water cooler in the office and having coffee with people, who, you know, randomly come into the office. Uh, but I think so far we're doing a really good job in VSI. Um, we're actually on Gather Town. I don't know if you've heard of it. No, I haven't. So, okay, so I really recommend it. It's it's kind of like a weird version of Minecraft okay. in the sense that you can build online spaces and you can build an office or you can build a university campus wow. and then each person gets their own character. So it's like you're in the office, technically. You okay. can walk around and you can go to people's desks. And so we, we stay connected through that and we have meetings on the platform and, and yeah, it's it's good. I mean, we're communicating from a distance. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. It's incredible, isn't it? How how a situation like this pushes us to find new ways. I'll have to suggest that now for uh, for Fingal County Council. We'll set up a virtual office. <laughs> um, and can and can you be yeah. anything as your character? Can you? <laughs> yeah. So actually, I'm currently a snowman. Oh, you're a snowman. Brilliant. <laughs> Well, there I, th I can see no issues with that whatsoever. So I want to ask you now a little bit about the volunteering and how you actually got into volunteering in the first place. Was it true transition year you started? Yeah, so I started in transition year because it was encouraged by the teachers and it was kind of a segment that was built into the curriculum for that year uh, because they wanted us to get practical hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. And there were no requirements, so we just signed up to the opportunities that we were most interested in. Um, so that's how I got started. And the first thing I did that year was take part in a kind of a PE assistant program okay. in Limerick's Bond Boards Brothers of Charity, which is um, a really, really good organization. And, and they work with, they provide supports and services to families and those with intellectual disabilities. Okay. So it was a really nice experience. And, and how did you actually apply for it? Was it just all done via your school or through another organisation? Or Yeah, so it was done through my school. So there was, okay. no, there was no work on my part. Um, okay. My school did it. Okay, that's excellent. And, were the, and, and as you said, there were no particular requirements uh, to, to, go, to go into the programme. No. No. Not okay. Really. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good to know that it's kind of open to everybody. And can I ask, um, you yourself, what what would you like to do in the future, career-wise? So that's a great question. <laughs> um, well, I, I have a BA in European Studies, and okay. last year I completed my MA in International Studies with a focus on conflict resolution and peace and development. So I guess my passion is I, I'm really interested in the areas of human rights, international protection, and migration. So 
ideally I'd like to work for an NGO like Human Rights Watch or Amnesty International or even if I could dream really big it would be the UN Refugee Agency wow. mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm actually considering returning to university maybe next year to study another degree maybe another master's uh, in something that's more kind of pinpointed mm -hmm. so something like international migration refugee law or humanitarian law something like that wow that's that's uh, certainly very lofty uh uh, objectives very admirable um, and we, we might want to speak to you again actually because this is the Europe Direct Information Centre so you, you might have to be able to participate in one of our future events I know human rights is something that we do hope to cover at some point in the future so we'll probably be back to you about that um, I just want you mentioned earlier UL University of Limerick and um, you were there and you took part you volunteered with their buddy program for Erasmus students didn't you could you tell me a little bit about that yeah, of course. Uh, so it was a really, really good experience because it was a program that's essentially built on intercultural exchange and intercultural understanding and friendship, basically. Yeah. And it never, it never felt like work. It never felt like, uh, you know, something really annoying I had to do at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It was just about getting to know new people who came to UL on exchange or on Erasmus, and it was helping them integrate into, okay. you know, the local culture and finding their bearings, bearings with the city and just how to access local services. And it was really fun, and I actually got to be the recipient of it when I went on Erasmus in Spain. Okay. So I was set up with a girl from my uni, and she helped me get to know the city, and she introduced me to her friend group, which was really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. And we hung out a lot. And it definitely made the experience of going to the uni like less intimidating. And it was just, it was just really comfortable. I felt supported. I felt like I knew what to do. And, I hope when I was a buddy in UL that I provided the same support system. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, and we're always encouraging people to, to do the Erasmus scheme. It's brilliant. And um, that, that sounds really interesting. I didn't realize they had a buddy program. And you just mentioned there that you then end up going to Spain. And you, you, were, you volunteered, you were a teaching assistant, weren't you? So, you, you, I mean, your volunteering work has taken you all over, which is, which is brilliant. And what, what, what was that experience like in Barcelona? What did you do? Um, so with studying European studies, they had a segment that was integrated into the course and it was called co-op or a job placement. And so they set me up with a secondary school um, mm -hmm. and the placement was for six months. So I did it from January to June mm -hmm. in 2015. And I was teaching students from the ages of about 11, 12 to 18, 19. And for the most part, it was conversation classes or sometimes I shadowed teachers. Mm -hmm. So I'd help mm -hmm. them with examinations or just different activities in the classroom. And it was, so before that moment, teaching was never something I thought of. I never thought I'd be into it, into it or mm -hmm. anything like that because I hated and I still kind of hate public speaking. <laughs> and I, I yeah, <laughs> so um, I, I didn't think I'd be interested in it, but it was actually such a positive experience seeing uh, students improve their English over the course of six months and like and just helping them feel more confident speaking English because often when, when I had them for conversation classes it didn't actually take place in the classroom it took place like in a separate room and I would take two or three students at mm -hmm. a time so it wasn't as if they were presenting to the whole class all the yeah. time it was just yeah. kind of more of a private um, Excellent. And, and it probably helped and your I, your confidence, did it, as well in speaking in front of people? Did you find it benefited you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. It, I got way more com comfortable, and it was also kind of it was nice because it was an exchange of you know both of us being uncomfortable in this moment, and so yeah. we both got to improve, you know, in different skills. That's great. And so that was that was really really nice. Yeah, and it's a hard thing yeah. to do to get up, Absolutely. even in front of a small group. It's not an easy thing to do. So, you know, that's great that that volunteering experience helped you with that. And I know you, you it's interesting. I spoke to Guy Flouch from Unicas earlier, and he, he was talking about students who go abroad, and they always, just like you said, you said it was the best experience of, of your life. And he said so many students come back and say the same thing. So I'm delighted you said that. 
Um, you liked it so much, you stayed, didn't you, in, in Spain and you became an English language assistant. Could you tell me about that? Yeah, so actually what happened was after my co-op, um, I went straight into Erasmus. And originally my Erasmus was supposed to be um, from September to February, but mm -hmm. I ended up extending it until July. Okay. I was there almost the whole academic season. And then um, I enjoyed my Erasmus so much that I just decided to remain in Spain and I took um, kind of like a leave of absence. So yeah. I put my university on hold and, <laughs> and I stayed in Spain. I became an English language assistant in an adult language school in a teeny little village in the center of Spain called Valdepeña. Okay. And I stayed there for eight months, I think. Yeah. English. And you enjoyed that. That was okay. Yeah. And, and and the reason I, I'm interested in that because I, I told you just this before we started recording, I was a language assistant as well in France over twenty years ago now. Um, and if people would like to learn more about that experience, there is another video in this series where I speak to my colleague Siobhan Walsh and I talk about my experiences as an English language assistant. So you can check out that video uh, in this playlist. So I want to now just ask you, Maria, um, what have you gotten out of being a volunteer uh, yourself? Well, volunteering has definitely taught me new skills, both hard and soft skills, okay. which is one of the best things about volunteering. And, and it's made me more flexible and creative in my thinking too. And I, I love the fact that I got to meet like some of the best people that I've ever met through volunteering. And mm -hmm. it's as if we're in this type of community of volunteers. Mm -hmm. We all have this, you know, this thing in common and shared goals. Yeah. And it's definitely helped me expand my network as well. So, you know, I know a few people now in my field of interest because of the couple of organizations that I've volunteered for in the past. And the other thing is going back to the skills, it's also really great to be able to say that I have, you know, X experience and X skills and have something concrete that I can put in my CV. Yeah. And it's a good way of enhancing um, my employability. Definitely. And I think it looks really good on a CV that you've spent time in another country because it shows great resilience to adapt to life in another country as well. I think and that there may be some of the soft skills you were talking about. Uh, you know, we, we get the work experience, obviously, as well. But we get I, I certainly found you get great life experience, don't you? Uh, did you find that yourself? Yeah, so I think it's definitely, you know, as well as helping me progress professionally, it's helped me progress progress personally as well yeah. in every single aspect and I just feel I feel just more confident like my self-esteem is better I feel like I have more knowledge on different subjects than I than I would have had if I didn't go volunteering um, communication skills definitely improved mm -hmm. you know you have to communicate with everyone um, intercultural understanding it's amazing that, because I, I volunteered an NGO in Greece so I, I got to come in contact with people from all over the world which was a fantastic experience and yeah, I just think I think it's beneficial for every aspect of your life, even mental health. I think okay, it's incredible. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, and and. Um... It, I'm really glad you mentioned communication skills because, again, I keep referring to our other videos, which is great that they're all linking in with each other. Jill Barrett, who's an employment uh, and business coach, um, spoke to me the other day, and she said how that you know communication skills really are the most important thing an employer is looking for and you're just after saying you know, that you know volunteering has really helped you with that so that that's brilliant to hear so the next thing i just want to ask you is i mean you've already mentioned how much you've enjoyed it but what, what did you enjoy the most out of your volunteering experiences do you think so i really enjoy the fact that volunteering leads to a concrete outcome and a positive impact and it allows me to contribute to something that I believe in okay you know as opposed to when you go to university and you have to study all these modules like maybe they're not really something that you're interested in but mm -hmm. with volunteering you have the freedom to choose what okay. you are actually interested in and what you want to make a difference in so I think that's that's definitely one of the best things and then also it's a good way to connect to your local community or even the international community and make an impact, make an impact, and advocate for change. Um, it's also a really great way to learn new things and gain new knowledge about whatever topic or theme the opportunity is about, and meet new people. 
And I would also say it's really good that volunteering can be challenging sometimes. So okay. sometimes it can really push you out of your comfort zone and it puts you in new environments that you're not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But that's also kind of the exciting aspect about it. And I can say that's what I enjoy. And could you expand on that? Because actually my next question was about challenges. So what, what, what were some of the challenges you found with volunteering? Um, so the positive challenges would be, you know, so maybe you're uncomfortable with public speaking and mm -hmm. whatever opportunity you're doing kind of forces you out of that and you have to, you have to public speak or, um, I don't know, maybe for some people who are uncomfortable with traveling and they have to go abroad, that's kind of pushing them out of their comfort zone. And that's, that's a really good challenge and mm -hmm. a personal challenge as well to overcome. But then some of the other challenges I would say is some organizations don't always have uh, certain supports in place for their volunteers, okay. um, especially if they're not used to having volunteers. So that's kind of a downfall sometimes, so you mm -hmm. have to be mm -hmm. careful with that. And then additionally, I would say it can be difficult to break out of the volunteer role and move into employment. Okay. There's a really fine line, and even I'm still trying to figure out how do I cross that line, because it, it can be quite tricky. Okay. Because, um, for example, <laughs> yeah, no, that's very interesting because we, we hope to speak to somebody else soon about exactly that point you made. So I'm really glad you brought that up, is how to make the transition from volunteering uh, to, to paid work and a career and that. So that that's really interesting. That you know that And that is a real challenge. And hopefully, we, like I said, we, we do plan to cover that in another interview. Um, so the, the last thing I want to ask you is just what would you say to any young people who are considering uh, volunteering as an option? So I'm going to risk sounding like a Nike advert, but just do it. <laughs> Definitely do it. Uh, it's a great experience and it's a good way to learn new skills and or build on existing skills and improve your employability and make new friends. And it's also amazing to know that you're making a difference, it, no matter how small the change. Um, and it's also one of the best ways to test the waters. So if okay. you're not sure that you'd like a particular area of work or something like that, volunteering can help you find out if you'd like that job or if you'd like to study that degree. So, you know, it, it's definitely a journey and it's one that I recommend. That, that's a, a fantastic place to, to finish, I think. And, and thank you very much, Maria. I, that, that was really, really interesting, I have to say. And, and uh, I hope it will encourage some of the people who are watching these videos to, to consider volunteering as an option and speak to your career guidance teachers in school or in, in your university or, or do some of your own research. Uh, you're with, again, the, the VSI, so maybe that's another organisation you could contact. So thank you very much, Maria.